What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Elite Infinis. The Infinis is a fully automatic, magazine-fed flywheel power blaster with one really cool feature. It has an ammo loading port in the back. allowing you to load your drum magazine without removing it from the blaster, which is pretty cool. Do you still load your mags by hand? That is so 2017, bro. The Infinis will retail for 69 giggity 99 US dollars and will be released in fall of 2018. Hasbro was nice enough to send me one slightly before its real launch so I could get the review out as quickly as possible. So let's get into it. Included is the blaster, 30 round drum magazine, 30 elite darts, and the instructions. The Infinis is battery powered and will not work without the batteries. It runs on four D-type alkaline batteries. To install, remove the rear battery flap, slide in four D-alkaline batteries, and reinstall the battery cover. Boom, now you're ready to pew pew. So going over the externals of the Infinis, starting up at the front. The front features a standard in-strike attachment nozzle so you can put on barrel extensions or other in-strike accessories. Below that, we have the front sling attachment point. Below that, we have a foregrip. No tactical rails or secret compartments. It's just a big block of plastic to put your hand on. On the top of the blaster, we have two in-strike tactical rails for uh, the mounting of optics. You know, two scopes, twice as accurate, right? And on this side, we have the access door. To open it, you can just pull down. It doesn't grant as much access as other access doors on other Nerf blasters, particularly with flight wheel blasters, it's pretty clogged up in there. Understandably so, because the loading mechanism takes up uh, some of the space in there. And to close, you can just pull up and it clicks into place. The Infinis is magazine fed and it's compatible with all in-strike magazines. It includes a 30 round magazine and it's the symmetrical style instead of the offset like the 35 round drum. You can load this drum just like any other in-strike mags or you can let the blaster load it for you. It is worth noting the insertion of the magazine is not as smooth as other blasters. There's a bit of an obstacle halfway up through the magwell, but if you force it on in there, it'll, it'll go. To the fire control group, in the front we have a magazine release. This is kind of the standard for modulus or elite blasters now. It's a button on the center line of the blaster, so righties and lefties can use it equally. Full ambi bro, super tactical. So you can stick out your middle finger and bump it, or hit it with your thumb of your other hand as you're grabbing the drum. Behind that is the rev switch. The Infinis is a flywheel powered blaster, so you want to rev it up a little bit before you pull the trigger. And after it's revving, of course you pull the main trigger and it fires. The Infinis is fully automatic and there's no semi auto or selector switch option. But the firing is electronically controlled, so it's not too tricky to fire off just one at a time. And down to the grip. The grip is relatively small in size, but it's pretty comfortable and it's not alienating to an adult hand. I complain about grips all the time, but this one is pretty solid. Now getting to the main selling feature of the Infinis, the loading port. The loading port is a really cool concept because it allows you to load the magazine without removing the magazine from the blaster. That's not just awesome for lazy people that just can't be bothered to remove the magazine. It also allows you to reload the blaster without deactivating the blaster. When you remove the magazine from the blaster, you're not able to fire the blaster until you put in a new mag. So if I'm running low on ammo and I have a zombie horde or a human threat in front of me, I don't want to disable my blaster by pulling out the mag, even if I'm doing a quick reload. So this feature allows me to keep my blaster on my threat as I'm reloading, which is fantastic for scavengers or anybody that ever wants to reload without disabling the blaster. This is one of the disadvantages of the magazine loading system. You have to remove the magazine in order to reload, as opposed to a front-loading cylinder-fed blaster, which has the same capability of keeping the barrel on your threat as you're reloading by just shoving darts into the front. And through my testing procedure, I was not able to jam this loading system, which I'm a little disappointed about, because at the end, I just started trying to jam it. Kind of like the second phase of Mythbusters, where they just go crazy to emulate the results. I tried to jam it, and I couldn't. Disappointed in myself, but very pleased with the blaster, so it works really well. The included drum magazine looks a little bit weird, but the auto-loading system does work with other mags. So you can totally put in other in-strike mags. And have it loaded up. More on the practicality of that feature in my opinion segment later. And right above the little loading slot is an LED, and this is kind of a status indicator light, which is pretty cool. Green solid means all systems functioning and you're loaded, ready to fire. Red means you have a dart jammed in the blaster or your access door is open, like that. Yellow solid means you've run out of ammo and you should reload. And yellow blinking means your magazine is loaded and you should stop shoving darts into the little hole. And when you're loaded, it disables the intake flywheel so you're not able to shove in way too many darts to jam it. That was one of the ways I tried to jam it. The robots are getting smarter, it can't jam itself. Skynet is near, bros. A little detail, but I think that indicator light is super cool. And I was personally worried about that little green light. It's not pulling too much current from the blaster, but if that little thing stayed on forever, your batteries would go flat. Worry not, it has a sleep timer built in. So if you stop loading darts, you don't rev the blaster or fire it, pretty much like you set it down and walk away. After two minutes, it'll turn off. 
like that. I even timed it just to be sure. It does turn off after two minutes. This is nice so if you set down your blaster and you go eat lunch and then you forget to ever come back, uh, the blaster doesn't like die slowly. That's it for the indicator light. Now back to the stock. It has kind of an odd shape, but the batteries are stored back here. Like I said, to get to the batteries, you remove the two screws, take off the battery door, put in your four D-type alkaline batteries, replace the door, put back in your screws, and you're ready to pew pew. And on top of the stock, you have a sling attachment point and another one down here, so you can configure your sling however you want it. The overall ergonomics and balance of the Infinis are pretty solid. Now this front triangle piece is kind of weird, and I'm still trying to get used to it. It's really just not my preference, but it's not blocking access to anything or like objectively poor engineering, so I can't really complain about it. But the weight and the balance feel nice. It just feels sort of like the Hyperfire and the Rapid Strike got together and then made this and then they listened to that Ellie Golding song. And they're like, boom, yeah, I like triangles too. I'll just put one right there. That's pretty much how the Infinis came to be. Triangles are my favorite shape. That's my theory. I'm sticking to it. That's the external overview of the Nerf Elite Infinis. Now let's see it out on the firing range. Using regular blue Elite darts, Now some burst firing using a different mag. Trying some waffle head darts. firing performance of the Infinis is as expected. It operates very much like the Rapid Strike or the Hyperfire. And through my testing procedure, I did not have any jams or malfunctions of the firing blaster or of the loading mechanism, so I'm pretty happy with it. I put the Infinis up on my chronograph and achieved an average velocity of 70 feet per second, which is the exact par of the Elite series. So it's perfectly in line with other Elite blasters and other Nerf blasters on the market right now. So overall opinion, kind of on the objective features of the Infinis overall, the blaster works pretty well and it does what it's supposed to do. Firing velocity is right at 70 FPS, so it's in line with other Nerf blasters on the market. Fully automatic is pretty fun. It's similar to a Rapid Strike or a Hyperfire. So price aside, I'd say there's no reason not to buy the Infinis. It does what it claims to do. Now diving a little deeper into the loading mechanism and is it worth it? Because this retails for about 70 US dollars, which is expensive. Outside of the loading mechanism, it's pretty much a Rapid Strike, which retailed for 35 or 40 US dollars, nearly half the cost. First question I ask myself, is this superior to loading by hand? Is it faster than loading by hand or is it just a convenience to make it easier? So time trial. I set out 30 Elite Darts and tried to load it by hand and and then loaded it with the automated system and compared the times. Granted, if you're getting shot at, you can't put all your focus into loading, but in my experiment, I was able to load by hand a little faster than the automatic loading system. So I wouldn't say the Infinis will let you load your magazines faster. If you're the type of nerfer to pick up a blaster and not have any tactical gear on you, you're not going to have like four or five extra magazines. So being able to load the magazine while it's in the blaster is super helpful. Like I mentioned, if you're running low on ammo and you have a zombie horde in front of you or a human threat, it's an inconvenience to take out the magazine to reload. And that's assuming you have a fully loaded magazine right next to you. You're still vulnerable for a moment as you transition. This feature is super cool because you're able to keep your barrel on your threat as you're loading your blaster. It does appear to be mechanically limited on the rate at which you can reload, unlike manual loading. If you made something like a stripper clip with a long enough contraption, you could totally just slam your hand down and load 30 rounds in like a second. It'd be tricky, but it's theoretically possible. This is mechanically limited. Without like overvolting the system, it can only load so many darts per minute. And in my reloading test, I was pretty much maxing out at that intake rate, which was pretty easily defeated by my manual loading. So that is kind of a limitation there. It also adds that audio component of 
so you can kind of give away your location based on that. So those are a few things to consider. I bring it up because of the retail price of the Infinis, particularly compared to the Rapid Strike or the Hyperfire. If it were equally priced, I'd be like, heck yeah, man, buy the Infinis. I mean, why not? If cost is irrelevant, it works pretty much like the Hyperfire or the Rapid Strike, so there'd be no reason to pick the others over this because that's just an added feature. And a very cool one at that. I'm not trying to knock it because it's mechanically pretty cool. And if you run around without gear, I genuinely believe many people would definitely benefit from that element. Not all nerfers, but some. But when you consider the cost, you'll have to make up that decision for yourself. So hopefully I've laid out all the facts for you to make that decision for yourself. I'd love to hear your feedback. Which would you rather have? One Infinis or two Rapid Strikes? Two Rapid Strikes is worth a little bit more, but you know, give me a break. It's close. Or to reframe the question, how many of you bros will think you're going to check out the Infinis for 70 US dollars? Let me know if you're going to buy it in the comment section below. So cost aside, my personal overall opinion on the Infinis is very high. Definitely the thumbs up. Magazine fed, two tack rails, front barrel extension, fully automatic, flywheel master race. It's a super fun blaster. The loading feature works way better than I was anticipating. I'm a little disappointed in myself that I couldn't get it to jam, but that makes me even more pleased with the performance of the blaster. So hopefully I've provided everything you need to know to make that purchase decision for yourself. Hasbro was nice enough to send me this sample unit before it launches, but when it comes out, I'll be sure to put a purchase link in the description box below. That's it for this video review. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, bros, stay tactical. Oh,